This video is going to show you how to do the conversions, so the five conversions that are on the few pages just before you get to question four in the math class one lesson notes. So we're going to do these four conversions really quickly to show you how to handle them on this TI calculator and then we'll also work through to the solution for that question four. So for this calculator it's a little bit different. We can't do the in Pepins the same way as we do in the HP calculator. We have to use the interest conversion menu. Um, so it's kind of like a table that we're going to use in order to convert our rate. But like I said before in one of the previous videos, um, this calculator doesn't store the information the same way that the HP calculator does. So we have to approach our interest rate conversions slightly differently when we get the rate converted and we've got that end result. Okay, so um, for this one here, I'm going to just do the, the rate conversions really quickly. I'm going to do this one over here as well for you to show you how to get um, this answer here. And then I'll do the other few that we have for practice. Uh, and then I'll show you the solution for question four. So again, this video is not a replacement for the main lesson video. You need to watch one of the main lesson videos in order to make sure that you get all of the information and theory and facts that you need in order to handle all of the math questions as well as all of the math law questions. Okay, so we're going to start with this one here for our conversion. So when we're doing a conversion, we're going from one J rate to another J rate. We normally say we do an impepin. So you're going to follow the impepin. You're going to write it out the same way. It's just going to be done slightly differently in your calculator display here. Okay, so uh, we're going to start by doing this one. So the place that you go to, to do this conversion is you need to use your second function and the I convert menu, which is above two. So you're going to press second and two, and you see that it takes you to NOM. Now you see that some things light up above here, and, and these are sort of the functions, the things that you're allowed to do in this menu. So you can compute things, you can enter things, and you can scroll up and down using the up and down arrows. Okay, so if you just keep going through, it's all three things that we use in our Pepin. So it starts us at NOM. If you go up, it takes you to the CY, which is your PYR equivalent. And if you go up one more time, it takes you to the effective. Okay, so down would do the same thing, just in the opposite order. It goes from NOM to effective to CY. So sometimes it's shorter. Right, using specific up and down arrow keys, it's shorter to get to different places. So I'm going to show you how to, how, what the quickest way of doing an interest rate conversion using this um, I convert menu. So we'll exit out of here. So let's say that you're starting a question from scratch and you need to do this conversion here to start your question out. This is the impepin that we have laid out in the question. So you're going to go second function I convert and then you're going to enter your nom straight away because that's what's showing in your calculator. It lands us there. So you're going to hit 10 and enter and you see that we've put 10 into the nom. Then we're going to push the up arrow to get to the CY, the compounding periods per year, which is the PYR equivalent. We are going to put two enter into that location to tell the calculator there are two compounding periods. Then we get to go up arrow one more time to our effective and for this one remember we said we don't enter anything in there this one we want to actually compute to find out what it is and so you see that it match what matches what we got in our main lesson video 10.25 so now we want to enter in the 12 PYR that we need so we're going to push the down arrow to get back to that CY which is your PYR equivalent we're going to enter 12 so 12 enter and then again, we're going to go down one more to get to our nom. And again, we don't enter anything in here. We want to actually calculate it. So we push compute. And you see that we get the same answer that we got in the main lesson video. Okay, so we're going to take this 
10%, J2 equals 10, and we're going to convert it to the, to the J4 to show you what you're going to get here for this percentage. So 10, enter, because we're already at the nom, up arrow, 2, enter, up arrow, compute, down arrow, 4, enter, down arrow, compute. And we get 9.8780 blah, 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 with a bunch more decimals. Okay, so that is the J4 equivalent of this J2 equals 10. Let's do the rest. Okay, so we'll start with this one here. So we've already, we're already at our nom, so we can just go ahead and start from the top down. So 6.5, enter, up arrow, 52, enter, up arrow, compute. Down arrow, 4, enter, down arrow, compute. And you see that we get the answer that we're supposed to for our interest rate. Last one here on this page. We're already at our nom, so we can go ahead and start right from the top. 11.75, enter, up arrow, 12, enter, up arrow, compute. Down arrow, 1, enter, down arrow, compute. And you see that we get the answer that we should. So the J365 here, we're already at the nom, so we can start from the top down. 16, enter, up arrow, 365, enter, up arrow, compute. Down arrow, 2, enter, down arrow, compute. And we get the correct conversion. Last one, 20, enter, up arrow, 4, enter, up arrow, compute. Down arrow, 12, enter, down arrow, compute. And you see that we get the correct conversion. Okay, so now let's incorporate that into this Sam and Sally question number four. So we are given this impepin that we need to do to start. So for us, instead of doing an impepin, we're going to do an I convert. Okay, so it's a little bit different when you do an impepin and I conversion on this calculator. You can't cross things off because we always need to enter, like we said before, five values to get that sixth value that they are asking you for or that you need to continue on to get the answer that you're asking you for. Okay, so we're always going to enter five. So that means we don't cross things off. We don't cross off the IYR and PYR like we did with the HP calculator. Okay, so we're going to start with this in Pepin. We're very, very sad with this one. We need to do our I convert. So if we were um, sort of just, you know, brand new, just picked up your calculator, you'd turn it on, then you'd go into your second two to get into your I convert. And then you'd start straight away because that's where it lands you in your nom. You'd start straight away with your conversion. So 19, enter, up arrow, 2, enter, up arrow, compute. Down arrow, 12, enter, down arrow, compute. And you see that we get the same conversion that we did in our main video. So here's where it's a little bit different. Like I said, this calculator doesn't store this percentage and the PY automatically in your calculator like the HP calculator does. So you can't just continue on and enter the other three values and after crossing off IYR, PYR. You actually have to still enter the rate and how it's compounded in your um, left side here every single time for this BA2+, plus because you're always going to enter five values to get the sixth. That you need. So we're going to exit this menu by pressing C and you see that it still keeps that beautiful interest rate with all of those wonderful decimals that we need in your display. So the first thing you're going to do straight away is you're going to push the IY key in order to plug that 18.288 blah 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 straight into the IYR. Okay once you've done that Okay, once you've gotten that taken care of, then you can start from the top down and enter all of your values in. So I'm going to start with my N. 20 times 12 equals N. I've already done my IYR. I don't want to overwrite it. 24,000 
PV, skip payment, that's what we're trying to find, zero plus minus future value, and then second PY, and we want to make sure that it's 12. It is for this one, but if it wasn't, you would press 12 and enter in order to plug in 12 in the PYR, and then you would exit, compute, payment, and you see that we get the answer that we're supposed to, that we got in the main lesson video, okay? So the key with this one is no crossing off IYR, PYR. You are always entering five values in order to get the sixth here on this left side. In this case, this is our answer. That's what the question's asking for. But if you're trying to find the payment to use it to do some steps later on, like we're, we're gonna do in some of our questions uh, later on, then you would find this payment and then you would continue on with the rest of your steps. Thank you.